Hello, I'm Steve Mascari. Welcome to Workshop Essentials. Today I'm going to be making some tabletop buttons for this dining table that I'm building. And a, a tabletop button is a little block of wood with a tongue on it which fits into a groove and it's screwed to the side of the tabletop which holds it down onto the frame. The first thing we have to do is to prepare our table and the best thing to do is to cut your grooves before you glue it together. If you don't, you can get round it, you can use a router to cut little slots where you need them or a domino machine if you've got one uh, but it's the easiest way to do it is to cut a groove the full length before you assemble your frame. The buttons themselves are little blocks of wood and there are two approaches to making them as a batch. You can either use a short wide board to start with. Now this is short because the grain runs this way okay and it, but it's quite wide and what I could do if I wanted would be to route a rebate on the end grain on my router table for example leaving me with a tongue then cross cut as it would be to whatever length I want my buttons to be and then just rip them off one by one. I could do that and it's a good use for a board end because let's face it there's not a lot you can do with something that size where the grain's going the wrong way if you like. So you can do that but in my workshop it's much more likely that I've got this sort of scrap long sections of fairly small section stuff and this is just out of the scrap box over here so this one's got a, a bit of a shake at that end uh, this one's got a, a, some very big shakes, I can, you, can, you can hear it, uh, and there's a screw hole there. So from there on out, that's just firewood. But I can use the rest of it to make buttons. Now, um, this has to be done sort of one tongue at a time. Cut a tongue, chop it off. Cut a tongue, chop it off. Cut a tongue, chop it off. So we've got to find an efficient way of doing the same thing over and over again. The first thing that we have to make sure is that our wood is exactly the right thickness. And the thickness that I want is a little bit less than the distance from the bottom of the groove to the top of the apron. Okay, the bottom of the groove to the top of the apron. And if I just rest that in there like that, I can feel that there is about a millimetre at the apron being proud of this and that's about right that's what I want the next thing to do is to get rid of all the sharp edges because it's easier to do that on a full length piece than it is to go round afterwards on every single separate button so let me see which way the grain goes on this that'll do so just remove all the arises very nice and all the rest takes place over on the bandsaw so come with me now those of you who are familiar with the way that I work will not be the least bit surprised to learn that I have a jig for doing this and this is it now I first published this many years ago on I think it's on workshop essentials volume 5 and um, it's it only does one job but it does it superbly well it consists of three pieces of MDF and a bit of plywood glued together there is a baseboard and a sub bed on it like that to, to give me a working edge at the front here there's also a handle a nice grip handle which goes right to the front and a secondary fence which is a little bit shorter this lines up with this top piece here and that's about five millimeters or so thick the only setup required on the bandsaw is the distance from the blade to the fence here that distance does two things 
It determines the thickness of the tongue and it determines the overall length of the button. So there are three cuts. The first one is done with my workpiece against the fence like that. And it's a rip cut which goes long enough to give me the length of the tongue here. And this is where we need to have a little bit of trial and error with the fence because depending on where the fence is, that will alter the thickness of this tongue. And this tongue has got to be a nice fit in the, in the existing groove. So that's the first cut. The second cut is turning it through 90 degrees on the base of the jig up to this main fence here. And that cuts off the waist from the tongue, leaving me with a tongue on the end of my workpiece. And then the third cut is done on the bed of the saw using the jig as a cross cut support to push the workpiece right through the blade. Now normally you wouldn't cross cut using a rip fence as a stop because if this gets stuck between the blade and the fence it can twist, it'll damage your blade, it'll damage the workpiece, it can get thrown up at you. It's generally speaking it's a no-no but on a job like this it's okay because it's properly supported all the way through. So I'm going to continue to push, not leaving this bit trapped between the fence and the blade, but keep pushing until it's clear, comes out the other side. So let's see how well it works. And I hope you noticed how I continued to push so that this is clear of the blade at the back. And that button will fit my groove very nicely indeed. It needs a little bit of cleanup at this back edge. So there's four edges to clean. And depending on the surface quality of your bandsaw cut, you might want to just touch that on a piece of sandpaper, a sanding disc or something. But essentially that's the finished button and that's ready to go over to the drill press to have a hole drilled through, which is then countersunk on the underside. That's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Tell everybody all about it. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Until the next time, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio.